Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So, and welcome back to another Heat playoff post game recap. This one is about game five for in New York City, Madison Square Garden, Heat and Knicks. It went down. Unfortunately, the Heat didn't come up with the victory. They lose 112 to 103 to the Knicks. And um, man, my initial reaction is I hate to say this, but we didn't get enough. We just didn't get enough from the guys that we needed to get, you know, some type of big game from. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to rag on a guy like Jimmy, right. For how amazing he's been throughout this playoffs for the heat. But this was a game where everybody expected him to come out and, and really be aggressive, really be the catalyst in order to get the heat going and, and, and get this victory, complete the, the series in five games. But he just didn't have it tonight. You know, he played very passively in my opinion, you know, he went five or 12 from the field, uh, no three-point attempts, nine of 11 from the free throw line, seven rebounds, nine assists, four steals, two blocks, 19 points. But if, you know, the stat line can be a little bit deceiving because you, uh, if you watch the game, you saw that in the fourth quarter with about three minutes left, you know, the, the he had really brought themselves all the way back and uh, we're down, I think, only one point. After Duncan Robin, Robinson had hit a couple of threes to get the Heat back into the game. And uh, Jimmy's Jimmy's decision making was just off, right? It started for me with that one play where he went to help on a on a pass that was re- defended really well by Caleb Martin, who was covering RJ Barrett, um, forced him into a bad shot, forced him away from the basket. Jimmy went to go help and wasn't even close to helping, um, doesn't even get close to him. Uh, doesn't get close to blocking the ball, leaves his man, which is Hardenstein, on the post by himself. Shot comes off the rim, and Hardenstein puts the dunk right back. And uh, I think that's what was the backbreaker for the Heat right there because that very next possession, Jimmy comes down and had a stupid turnover where he's kind of trying to dribble it between people, got caught up in the lane, and just gave the ball away. After that, it was pretty much a wrap, you know, and um, you got to give a lot of credit to the Knicks, right? They came out uh, pretty lackluster in the first quarter, right? They only had 14 points in the first quarter. Uh, The Heat looked dominant. And then in the second quarter, they really turned it up, started seven of seven from the field in the second quarter, uh, were able to increase the lead in the game and uh, go into halftime with a 50 to 47, uh, you know, halftime lead. And then in the third quarter, it was more of the same from the Knicks. They really came out rolling. Uh, the Heat got in foul trouble early. And then all of a sudden, the, the wheels just started to kind of get loose. I don't want to say fall off, but it definitely got loose for the Heat. Um, gave up a bunch of threes. And that was the story of the night. You know, the, the Knicks made their threes when they needed to, and the Heat missed all of their threes. Um, you had multiple guys go over when it comes for three. And more importantly for me was Kevin Love. Kevin Love went 0 for 7 tonight from three pointer, two of 10 from the field, four points, five rebounds. Uh, just a negative on, on, on overall his impact in the game, you know, and, and sometimes you got to shoot your way out of a slump, right? But that's more the case when you're a shooter. Kevin Love isn't that type of shooter when it comes from three. Yeah, you make the open threes that they give you, but if you know you're struggling from three, one of the highest IQ plays you can make in basketball is to take a dribble, take a step in and shoot a higher percentage shot from the two point range, right? Or from the elbow where, yeah, you're not getting the three points, but you're increasing your chance of making a shot, increasing your chance of getting yourself back into rhythm. And Kevin Love, just for whatever reason tonight, refused to do that. He continued to shoot the ball from three and it wasn't effective. It really kind of let us down um, because it didn't allow anybody else to, to really build momentum, right? Um, you look at the Heat's box score, and we don't have not one player in double in 20 points, with over 20 points. Jimmy was the closest with 19, Bam right behind him with 18, and, uh, you know, you had a 17 from Duncan Robinson who came in and was a spark, the only spark realistically when it, comes, when it came to shooting uh, and bench points. Uh, you know, he had a good night from sh- from three, shot 50 percent, five of ten from the field, from three point six of 13 from the field. It just, you know, when you're missing that many threes and you're the guy shooting the three, you have to do something to get your other teammates involved. And and Kevin Love is such an experienced player that I felt like he should have known better in that instance to say, let me not take this three. Let me dribble it. Let me try to take the ball to the hoop. Let me do something different to to 
change the rhythm of the game. Uh, you know, you, Kyle Lowry was another guy who, who struggled mightily from three. He was two of eight. Um, Caleb Martin was two of four. Strews, four of ten. Uh, Gabe Vincent, oh, three. It was just a bad shooting night from the Heat from three. You know, at one point we were three of 22 from the um, three-point line. We ended up going 30%, uh, 13 of 43 in the game. And the Knicks, you know, they hit timely threes. We, they didn't hit that many more threes. We, bo we both made the same amount, 13 threes, but they shot six less threes than us. Um, and mostly because they were able to get offensive rebounds and get, you know, put backs and stuff like that. Uh, their real damage tonight was done on the free throw line. And that's something that, that I've said before that the, he had to do a better job of dominating is the free throw line. He only went 16 of 19 from the free throw line, which is pretty good, right? 80, 84%. And Nick shot 40 free throws tonight. Again, 40 free throws and uh, May 29 for 72 percent and uh even when the heat went to follow the, you know the hack of robinson which worked out even he hit his uh, his free throws he ended up going 50 percent uh and made some important free throws for the knicks down the stretch uh julius randall the the dude who made the comment about wanting to have it more he really played well and he showed his adversity uh you know ability to to play through adversity um he had a great game for the knicks he was four of seven from three point uh six of ten from the free throw line ended up with 24 points five rebounds five assists and and has some impactful moments right for for the knicks and uh, you kind of expected the knicks to come out with that moment with that energy tonight and uh they definitely did uh, i don't know if it was the music from dj malapity shout out to dan uh living one once more uh to get to game six but you know, the, the Knicks really had to put it all out on the line, and they did. And even with all of that, right, in the fourth quarter, in the final minutes of the game, uh, the Heat still were right there to win this game. Like, literally, right there, a possession or two away, a good play, a good pass, uh, you know, a reset when, when, when nothing is really going your way. And the Heat just couldn't pull it together for whatever reason. And I don't know if it's due to... You know, the nervousness of closing out a series in, on the road in an environment like MSG, which is obviously rocking. Um, but, you know, you, you have to be able to withstand the best punch that a team can give you. Uh, you know, you got to you got to look at a guy like uh, Jalen Brunson played all 48 minutes tonight, include him and Grimes, both of those guys. I don't know when was the last time I saw two players play an entire 48 minutes for a team. Uh, but that's how it shows you how desperate the Knicks were, right? They know how big of a catalyst Brunson is for them. And he definitely responded 12 or 22 from the field. He was four 10 from the three point made 10 out of 12 free throws ended up with 38 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. Like he was the guy for the Knicks and the heat really didn't have an answer for him, which is usually the case when you're facing a best player, that guy's going to get his and Brunson has been able to do, play well throughout this series. But, you know, when you have him with, with seven assists and he's feeding a guy like Randall, finding guys like Robinson for easy dunks in the paint, um, RJ Barrett for easy layups in the paint. Those are things that that kind of break the camel's back as far as the defensive effort goes, because you, you do everything right and the guy's still able to make a play. But I want to focus most, mostly on the heat on this recap because I, I was really disappointed with, with how they played and the energy that they played with, right? You're thinking that, all right, you go into the halftime, you're down three, you, you got to come out in the third quarter and have some energy. How do the Heat respond? They give up 34 points in the third quarter after giving up 36 points in the second quarter. So in between those two quarters, the Heat give up 70 points, 70 points to the Knicks. That's just not Heat basketball. That's not the defensive effort that we've seen and are accustomed to from this Heat team. And it allowed the Knicks to get a big lead get a little bit of comfort, build that momentum, build that belief in their, in themselves and in their role players and have that, you know, translate to the court. Now, in the fourth quarter, the Heat did a great job of coming back, right? And mostly that was built off the Duncan Robinson three-pointers and, and his hot shooting, well, which is a welcome sight, to be honest, because if he can continue to shoot like this, um, not necessarily 50%, but with the confidence of hitting big threes and, and shooting multiple threes, the Heat are going to be in a better position when it comes to the bench. But we need our stars to play like stars when the game matters. 
right? And that's where Jimmy Butler kind of, uh, I don't want to say, you know, he he choked, but he, he, he definitely let us down. And I'm sure he let himself down because of the performance and the way that he played. I'm sure when he goes back and reviews the tape on the way home um, tonight, he, he's going to be kicking himself, you know, wait and looking at all the wasted opportunities that he had like i said that one sequence in the last two minutes of the game where that he goes to try to block the shot doesn't get it arnstein gets the offensive rebound and the dunk we come right back down have a turnover they come right back and score again that those type of little details is what kills kills teams and it definitely killed the heat tonight um one of the biggest things that 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 you know, stands out when it comes to who wins the games in this series is the rebounding. Um, the rebounding was definitely a edge tonight for the Knicks. They had 50 rebounds to the Heat, 34. Even though offensive rebounds was kind of close, right? It was 14 for the Knicks, 11 for the Heat. Everything else that the Knicks got as far as offensive chances and second chance points came off their ability to rebound. And in these last two games, we saw the Heat win the rebound battle and 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 cruise, you know, essentially to victories. Tonight it was the Knicks' turn. They were out rebounding the Heat, and that allowed them to, you know, reset themselves, find, you know, kill our momentum when it came down to us having shots and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it, it really had an effect on how the Heat were able to attack them uh, on the offensive side and even in the paint. You know, Robinson, uh, Randall. Uh, Hardenstein, they, those guys did their job tonight as far as being big men for the Knicks. Uh, all of those guys affected the Heat in multiple plays. Uh, I remember this one play from Bam where he didn't go up quickly, got called for a travel because Robinson stepped up and kind of took away that little that dunk. Now, I don't know if this is going to translate into another he- Knicks victory because, honestly, if I'm a Knicks fan, I kind of feel like we we, we we stole this game, right? Just like you, they kind of stole game two. Like, you know, they played that game without Jimmy, didn't really play their best, and they got the victory. Tonight was the same thing. Uh, Jimmy really didn't step up for the Heat. No one else really had an answer except for for Duncan Robinson in the last five minutes of the game. So the Knicks were able to make the the most out of those little chances. And the, he gave them those chances with the turnovers and stuff like that. Uh, it really killed any type of momentum or any type of uh, certainty or not, not certainty, but, you know, any type of rhythm that the Heat had or could have built on in those last couple of minutes. Another thing, you know, the Heat played a lot of sloppy defense tonight, had 30 fouls. Uh, in the third quarter, the Knicks were in the bonus with about six, seven minutes left in the in the quarter, which is just ridiculous to allow a team to be in the bonus so early. You get that means that you're getting tic tac fouls, you're, you're not covering your man, you're late to on the rotation. You know, you're 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 fouling a guy while he's dunking or while he's shooting, and those are things that just take away from the momentum being built throughout the game. Uh, you know. Man, even though the Knicks had a 19-point lead at one point in this game, the Heat still found a way to come back. So that's what what gives me a little bit of solace in this game to say, all right, we didn't play our best and we still had a shot to win the game. Just shows you how good we can be when we're, we're even when we're not playing our best. But in order to close out a series on the road, you have to play your best. And that's not what we saw tonight from the Heat. They did not play their best and it definitely had an effect on us um, as far as what we were able to do now uh g- game six is friday uh I, I i expect it to be a completely different story right i don't expect Jun- uh, brunson to be able to play another 48 minutes even though the knicks probably need him to play 48 minutes in order to give themselves a real shot at winning but we need to see more from jimmy and we need to see more from bam uh we saw our role players g- guys not necessarily have the best night right i mentioned kevin love uh, Kyle Lowry, Caleb Martin had a rough night tonight. You know, he didn't necessarily, you know, light it up as far as the, the offensive side goes. He only ended up with 11 points. Uh, just just going to need your stars to play like stars. And we need Jimmy to really take over. And I had mentioned it in the previous recap that he didn't have a 30-point game yet or something like that in the series, and yet that he was still up 3-1. to one. It just shows you that you can't expect to win like that all the time, right? Because tonight was another night where Jimmy doesn't even have 25 points. He'd lose, and we still get some type of uh, support as far as who can give you points that you're not expecting them from. Now, 
in my opinion, I really think that this game six is going to be a, a different type of heat, right? You're going to get Jimmy really being aggressive on offense and, and coming out early in the first quarter to, to put his imprint on the game. You're going to see Bam be involved in a lot more pick and rolls towards the basket because it was effective and it has been effective for them uh, this series. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you get a cleaner performance when it comes for defense. Like, again, you know, you have Bam with five fouls, Jimmy with three fouls, Kevin Love with three fouls, Gabe Vincent had four fouls, four dumb fouls, as a matter of fact. Uh, Kyle Lowry, he had five fouls. Zeller had three fouls. Caleb Martin had three fouls. Like, Duncan Robinson got called for two fouls. Heisman only played three minutes, and he got a foul. Like, everybody fouled. 30 fouls is way too much when you pride yourself on defense. The Heat are going to definitely clean that up when it comes uh, to playing it at home in Miami. And uh, maybe they'll get a little bit of home cooking because, in my opinion, there were a lot of tic-tac fouls that uh, were kind of – you know, 50-50 wouldn't necessarily go either way if it was just a regular playoff, a regular season game and not necessarily a playoff game. But uh, all credit to the Heat, to the Knicks, man. You know, they came out and, and really showed that they did want to be in this series. Uh, they didn't want to go down and out at home in front of their fans, which would have sucked for, for the Knicks. But the Heat are going to have to wake up and, and, and really put forth their best effort. Literally, their best game of the of the series has to be Game Six, and I and I'm really anticipating that being the case because we're gonna need it, yeah, and we're gonna need Jimmy to step up, and we're gonna need Bam to step up, and we're gonna need these guys to put on a performance at home in order to close out the series and get ready for either Philadelphia or or Boston. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, you can never count out a team that's playing at home when their back's against the wall. They're always going to get a good performance. Like I said, you get 38 points from Brunson, another 24 from Julius Randle. Uh, RJ Barrett had a, had an impressive 26 points. And nobody else for the Knicks had double figures. So their three big guys came in and stepped up and, and did their thing, right? The Heat didn't get that type of performance tonight from their main guys. Neither one of those guys had 20 points between Jimmy and Bam. And uh, that's a recipe for disaster. You know, those guys have to do a better job of, you know, taking the initiative and saying, you know what, give me the ball in the areas that I like. I'm going to take over on offense and and I'm going to put my stamp on this game and, and showcase my will on how to win this game. Uh, game five, man, is a wrap. He go down 112 to 103. Looking forward to game six on Friday. I think it's going to be another one of these, you know, tough, gritty defensive games, uh, even though the score says 112 and 109. But, you know, like I said with Richard in the, in the post game recap for game five, it seems like the, the team that gets to 100 first is going to win. And the Knicks tonight got to 100 first. Um, they had 90 points in the fourth quarter already. He was still down 14 at that point. And uh, they find a way to cl claw back. But. It was just too little too late for the Heat. Friday is going to have to be a different story, and I'm expecting that to be the absolute case. Uh, yeah, man, not the situation that I wanted to do this Game 5 recap, but it is what it is. Can't always celebrate the wins. We have to talk about the losses as well. But I hope you guys continue to join me after the Heat games on our YouTube channel. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit the notification button so you guys get notified whenever we drop these little videos. And, uh, yeah, after game six, I'm going to have a little, you know, uh, a guest appearance as well. Um, going to have to celebrate this Heat victory on Friday. Save the series winner for another, another day and go from there. Uh, make sure you guys are telling a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about this amazing thing that we got going on here as we continue to bring you more content from the Sports with So So podcast. It's your boy So. Until next time, peace. <laughs>